Well, hello everyone. In today's video, we will talk about day in the life of my Powerwall system. Currently in a garage, it's 87 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. Current Powerwall temperature on the Powerwall number one is at 30.3 degrees Celsius. The fan comes on at 28 degrees Celsius, which translates around um, 84 to 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Here are the, those Noctua fans that I installed in these power walls. They help with ventilation and they actually do work really well. No issues with them. They are on right now since the turn on temperature is 28 degrees Celsius. I forgot to mention that sensor for power wall is right here. It goes right that smack in the center of the power wall in between the cells. So that's, I think that's the most accurate temperature that you can get. Uh, at the most accurate temperature reading that you can get and help this fan turn on and off. Uh, the fan does come on and off uh, during the day, during the cycle. As soon as the temperature goes below 28 degrees, they do cut off. So here are all three power walls. I've kind of completed everything right now. I started hanging on stickers for inspection, which will probably be next week. So here are all three power walls. Uh, I have made power wall videos in the past. I have made a video uh, on a power wall 3.0, which will be that one over there in a corner. And I made a video in regards to a battery talk. So we're gonna mix those together today. Now, as you can see, the batteries are on their side and there's nothing wrong with them. And from previously where I was taking the video of a temperature, you could see that uh, we have some spider webs inside and whatnot. I absolutely do not touch this at all. They've been like this for over a year. Everything is working just fine. Um, reason for making this video will come in a later part, in a second part of this video actually, to talk about how do power walls perform over the last 100 days off grid. I can say one thing if you don't want to watch this whole video, me ranting about uh, power walls and cells and modules, uh, they were performing great. I made minor adjustments, but everybody will need to make those once you have finished making your power wall. Now, since I will be mentioning cells and modules, each one of these is an individual cell. I have three cells per one module and 16 modules per one power wall. Each power wall, each power wall equates to 48 cells, 16 modules. And then you have three power walls with 48 modules all together. Okay, now that we have looked at uh, power walls in my garage, and uh, all the setup and the setup that I have. Let's look at the battery, I mean the Powerwall data that I have collected over the previous three months of everyday use. And I am talking about 100 days right now at this moment. Yeah, it's exactly not 100 days. In 100 days, I have put 2.269 megawatts into the batteries and I have pulled out 2.189 megawatt hours out of the battery. Uh, according to Smart Shunt, uh, Victron Smart Shunt, uh, that related into 35 total charge cycles. Uh, my minimum power wall voltage was 46.95 and the maximum was 56.55 volts. 
At the current moment, the power voltage is at 54.24 volts. We are charging at 129.687 amps. Here is the graph of charging or discharging, which represents amps. And it goes from 11 o'clock this morning to right now, which is about almost 5 p.m. Power wall current state of charge is 85.9%. Uh, just to say, I will make a follow up video on a smart shunt and my settings that work best for me because uh, there are settings that you have to make on it to make it work properly. properly. These numbers actually do help a lot while making those adjustments. Let's go and look at the typical day in the life of the Powerball. Here is 24 hour period from July 6th from 0 hundred hours to 2400 hours. That's a complete day. Um, all these little blips that you see here are places where the air conditioning has came on. So as the day progresses, you can see that uh, air conditioning comes on less and less, uh, meaning it's like one o'clock in the morning and then it comes a point where it doesn't work during the night anymore and you have a nice flat discharge curve. Um, and we can see that voltage always drops down once the air conditioning comes on. It's not by much, but it does calm down a little bit. Then we come around 8 o'clock when the charging stops, starts. Okay, And then we see as the day progresses and the interior of the home uh, uh, gets warmer, the air conditioning comes on, turns off, comes on, turns off, so on and so forth. And then we come into the period of the day where the charging is really uh, pronounced. Uh, these blips right here represent clouds going in and out. Uh, why is that important? I think, I think it is important to know the data off of your modules. My not modules because I have a three cells per modules and um, those, uh, and I have 16 modules with three cells each, which is 48 cells in the power wall. It's important for us, especially do yourself as to know what each one of your cells or modules is doing. So we can prevent meltdowns, fires, and all that stuff. That's the reason why I collect this data. But the reason why I'm showing this data is um, that what you want from your original settings and what you get in reality are two different things. Uh, I originally made a video, which for link there is, it is in the description, a battery talk video from uh, January of 2020. And I showed my reasoning behind my, uh, my Powerwall setup. Uh, what I wanted to do, meaning I wanted it to be at 56.4 volts at fully charged to about 40, I think think 44 volts at fully discharged. However, theory and reality are totally different. Uh, my, my power walls have stabilized and my stable settings are at 55.3 volts or at 55.6 volts, 55.5 volts at fully charged at the power walls and 55.3 volts and the uh, uh, inverter settings, they have stabilized where I'm going to have a spread of 46, 46 millivolts between the highest and lowest charge cell at, the, at my full capacity. <clears throat> if I go above this, the spread increases and I do not like that, so I just leave it alone at these settings. Uh, the reason behind making this video is to show that, you know, there's a lot of videos out there just showing that perfect charge and perfect discharge and, and you get this capacity and you get that capacity. Uh, none of that matters once you put your power in a production. 
I have 100 days worth of data from these powerwalls. These are the best settings for me. And I, and this is what, it be, what best works for me. It is very important for you to know your powerwall and to monitor each cell or each module on individual level. This is very important, as I say again, for us that are doing the do-it-yourself powerwall setups. Um, and it is important to have a BMS, and especially the BMS that can monitor data and transmit data. I have a dual setup with a, with a kind of a dumb BMS that doesn't give me any data, and, uh, uh, and I have a, a little battery balancer, Bluetooth battery balancer that gives me all this data so I can monitor it and make sure my system is healthy. Uh, the batteries do not change temperature a lot during the day or not. My fans on the power walls, as you have seen, they do come on and they, they go off at night. The, if the battery, if the, if the garage temperature is at 30 degrees, that's where the, uh, that's where the power walls and actually the modules and cells, they're exactly the same temperature. It doesn't change a lot, only changes with the, with the, you know, with the ambient temp. They do not get hot while charging. They do not get hot while discharging since I have such a huge amount of cells and modules. So the load on each individual power wall is at the minimum. Uh, this is today's power wall uh, voltage. Okay, currently we are at uh, delta between highest and lowest is 13 millivolts. Uh, we are at right now 87.5 percent state of charge. Uh, voltages, you know, they are as they are. I'm just trying to go slowly, so this is probably best watched on a computer screen or on your TV, so you can see these numbers. But power wall is at 54.18 volts. Um, I probably need maybe another 10 kilowatt hours to go into it to be fully charged. All three power walls. Okay. And then this is currently what we have. This is your, this here is the solar power. This is what it's coming in to the system right now. We see this big old dip over here. We had rain between 3 and 4 o'clock. It got kind of a, a partly cloudy, and then we have producing a larger amounts of power right now, 87.6%. Home use 18 kilowatts, produce 30. Everything is good, but the main point behind this video is uh, that you will have to find a sweet spot for your power wall. What that might be? I do not know, but you do require data from the cells in this kind of a format to have it working properly. I think. Time will only tell. I only have 100 days. I'll probably make a follow-up video at a year or six months or nine months or something like that. I don't know, but I think key to success to have a properly working power wall is data you got to find a sweet spot and especially with these cells that we are buying from China and uh, uh, and somebody who who has as and as somebody who has grade B U cells like me it's very important even the ones that they sell us as a new I kind of have my doubts about those cells uh, that's that's a probably entirely different video that I don't want to put in here but I think we are not really getting what we are paying for over there. Um, that's just my opinion. I'm sticking with it. Um, but I will, I will get into details of that maybe a little bit later. However, smart shunt working properly. I need about 130 amp hours more to have them fully charged. And guys, especially us that are making these do-it-yourself power walls you have to know what your cells or modules are doing on individual level. That is the only key to success. 
um, perfect charge or discharge curve doesn't matter once you put this into production because your power production from the sun the available amount of power from sun changes all the time so you're not going to have perfect charge or discharge curve you might discharge five six percent when you uh, when you're charging the wall during the day it's not going to be perfect look at right here this morning I was at 56.7 percent by two o'clock and I was at 81.5 percent then it goes down to 81 percent then it goes up then it goes down and now it's back up my opinion is all those micro charges and discharges the bursts of energy in and around will have a different effect on each cell or each module that is my story and I'm sticking with it because that is what I learned from a three day uh, three hundred days a little bit over three months worth of data that I have these are my settings for right now actually my settings are at 55.3 volts at, L at, at LB 6548s I do uh, constant uh, voltage charging um, setting is the same for uh, 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 charging and a float I don't change that uh, once they're fully charged the um, the power walls do need some time to balance themselves out because you know you have a different length cables you have a different voltage drops at each connection all those things are very important uh, so they need some time to balance themselves out once they are kind of fully charged you can see it once they get to it that they are balancing each other out with the help of uh, uh, charge controls from uh, inverters but please always learn your cell voltages they truly tell a story of what's going on with your system and I think it's very important to know what's going on with your system guys if you have any question or any comments please leave them down below in a comment section tell me if I'm doing something right if I'm doing something wrong but as a guy that like, likes data I wanted to show you this and this is what's going on and I think this right here the spread I think this will be common for everybody I just think that way but this is what it is today we're charging 88.7 percent 150 charging at 154.3 amp hours the max amp input into batteries today was at 218 amps let me see what was the largest discharge from battery was this morning sometimes at 97 amps so keep an eye on those cells especially us that are doing these uh, imported cells from China keep an eye on them keep an eye on them real good something like this I think helps so I'll talk to you guys soon